Sherlock Holmes is a fictional character created by British author and physician Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, a London-based consulting detective whose abilities border on the fantastic. Holmes is known for his astute logical reasoning, his ability to adopt almost any disguise, and his use of forensic science to solve difficult cases. The character first appeared in print in 1887, and was featured in four novels and 56 short stories by Conan Doyle, as well as later works by other authors. The first novel, A Study in Scarlet, appeared in Beaton's Christmas Annual in 1887 and the second, The Sign of the Four, in Lippincott's Monthly Magazine in 1890. The character's popularity grew with the first series of short stories in the Strand magazine, beginning with A Scandal in Bohemia in 1891. Additional short story series and two novels appeared from then to 1927. The events in the stories take place from about 1880 to 1914. All but four stories are narrated by Holmes as friend and biographer, Dr. John H. Watson. Two are narrated by Holmes himself, and two others are written in the third person. In two stories, Holmes tells Watson the story from memory, with Watson narrating the frame story. The first and fourth novels, A Study in Scarlet and the Valley of Fear, include long passages of omniscient narrative of events unknown to either Holmes or Watson. Inspiration for the character Doyle said that Holmes was inspired by Joseph Bell, a surgeon at the Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh for whom he had worked as a clerk. Like Holmes, Bell was noted for drawing broad conclusions from minute observations. However, he later wrote to Conan Doyle, You are yourself Sherlock Holmes and well you know it. Sir Henry Littlejohn, Chair of Medical Jurisprudence at the University of Edinburgh Medical School, is also cited as an inspiration for Holmes. Littlejohn, who was also police surgeon and medical officer of health in Edinburgh, provided Doyle with a link between medical investigation and the detection of crime. Another inspiration is thought to be Francis Tanky Smith a policeman and master of disguise who went on to become Lester's first private detective. Another inspiration might be Maximilian Heller, by French author Henry Covain. In this 1871 novel, Henry Covain imagined a depressed, antisocial, polymath, cat-loving and opium-smoking Paris-based detective. It is not known if Conan Doyle read Maximilian Heller or if all this is coincidental, but it might be a reason why he wrote in The Adventure of the Greek Interpreter. My ancestors were country squires. My grandmother was the sister of Annette, the French artist, fictional character biography. Early life details about Sherlock Holmes's life, except for the adventures in the books, are scarce in Conan Doyle's original stories. Nevertheless, mentions of his early life and extended family paint a loose biographical picture of the detective. An estimate of Holmes as age in his last bow places his year of birth at 1854. The story, set in August 1914, describes him as 60 years of age. Leslie S. Klinger, author of the new annotated Sherlock Holmes, posits the detective's birth date is the 6th of January. Holmes says that he first developed his methods of deduction as an undergraduate. His earliest cases, which he pursued as an amateur, came from fellow university students. A meeting with a classmate's father led him to adopt detection as a profession, and he spent six years after university as a consultant before financial difficulties led him to accept John H. Watson as a fellow lodger. Beginning in 1881 Holmes has lodgings at 221B Baker Street, London. According to an early story 221B is an apartment at the upper end of the street, up 17 steps. Until Watson's arrival Holmes worked alone, only occasionally employing agents from the city's underclass. These agents included a host of informants, and a group of street children he called the Baker Street Irregulars. The Irregulars appear in three stories, A Study in Scarlet, The Sign of the Four and The Adventure of the Crooked Man. His parents are not mentioned in the stories, although Holmes mentions that his ancestors were country squires. 
In The Adventure of the Greek Interpreter, he claims that his great-uncle was French artist Horace Vernet. Holmes's brother Mycroft, seven years his senior, is a government official who appears in The Adventure of the Greek Interpreter. The Final Problem, and The Adventure of the Bruce Partington Plans, and is mentioned in The Adventure of the Empty House. Mycroft has a unique civil service position as a kind of human database for all aspects of government policy. He lacks Sherlock's interest in physical investigation, however, preferring to spend his time at the Diogenes Club. Life with Watson Holmes works as a detective for 23 years, with physician John Watson assisting him for 17. They were roommates before Watson's 1887 marriage and again after his wife's death. Their residence is maintained by their landlady, Mrs. Hudson. Most of the stories are frame narratives, written from Watson's point of view as summaries of the detective's most interesting cases. Holmes frequently calls Watson's writing sensational and populist, suggesting that it fails to accurately and objectively report the science of his craft. Detection is, or ought to be, an exact science and should be treated in the same cold and unemotional manner. You have attempted to tinge it, a study in scarlet, with romanticism, which produces much the same effect as if you worked a love story. Some facts should be suppressed, or, at least, a just sense of proportion should be observed in treating them. The only point in the case which deserved mention was the curious analytical reasoning from effects to causes, by which I succeeded in unraveling it. Sherlock Holmes on John Watson's pamphlet, The Sign of the Four Nevertheless. Holmes's friendship with Watson is his most significant relationship. When Watson is injured by a bullet, although the wound turns out to be quite superficial, Watson is moved by Holmes's reaction. It was worth a wound, it was worth many wounds, to know the depth of loyalty and love which lay behind that cold mask. The clear, hard eyes were dimmed for a moment, and the firm lips were shaking. For the one and only time I caught a glimpse of a great heart as well as of a great brain. All my years of humble but single-minded service culminated in that moment of revelation. The great hiatus Conan Doyle wrote the first set of stories over the course of a decade. Wishing to devote more time to his historical novels, he killed off Holmes in The Final Problem. After resisting public pressure for eight years, the author wrote The Hound of the Baskervilles. In 1903 Conan Doyle wrote, The Adventure of the Empty House, set in 1894, Holmes reappears, explaining to a stunned Watson that he had faked his death in, The Final Problem, to fool his enemies. The Adventure of the Empty House marks the beginning of the second set of stories, which Conan Doyle wrote until 1927. Holmes' aficionados refer to the period from 1891 to 1894, between his disappearance and presumed death in The Final Problem, and his reappearance in The Adventure of the Empty House, as the Great Hiatus. The earliest known use of this expression is in the article, Sherlock Holmes and the Great Hiatus, by Edgar W. Smith, published in the July 1946 issue of Baker Street Journal. The 1908 short story, The Adventure of Wisteria Lodge, is however described as taking place in 1892 due to an error on Conan Doyle's part. Retirement in his last bow, Holmes has retired to a small farm on the Sussex Downs. The move is not dated precisely, but can be presumed to predate 1904. He has taken up beekeeping as his primary occupation, producing a practical handbook of bee culture, with some observations upon the segregation of the Queen. The story features Holmes and Watson coming out of retirement to aid the war effort. Only one other adventure, The Adventure of the Lion's Mane, takes place during the detective's retirement. The details of his death are unknown.